Hi, it's Tuesday, July 15th. Pretty quiet across the broader tropical Atlantic this week, but we are watching one disturbance off the northeastern coast of Florida, dubbed Invest 93L. If you've been following me on social media for the last few days, we've been mentioning this. Uh, this is an old surface trough that crawled eastward across the southern U.S., emerged over the water, and then started drifting towards the southwest, towards the Florida Peninsula. We've seen a weak circulation develop and some slight organization of the system. It will likely now cross Florida and move into the northeastern Gulf region as it continues west or west-northwestward over the next few days. Here's a zoomed-in visible loop of the system. So this is the Florida Peninsula right here. And you'll immediately see some rotation to your eye. What stands out this morning is a, a tiny spinner here. This is probably not the true center of the system, but rather rotating around the broader low-level circulation, which is a wider pocket in through here. So that's where the center of circulation is. And you'll notice right away as well, there's kind of bare bones structure to the system, not a ton of thunderstorms. There is a batch of rain, especially between Melbourne and Daytona Beach and points inland. And that could very well cause some flash flooding concerns today. So do be careful and mindful if you're in this part of the Florida Peninsula as this begins to cross. But in totality, this isn't a lot of thunderstorm activity when we're talking about tropical development. And one of the primary reasons for that is the environment's just a little bit dry. If we look at the water vapor RGB product here, you'll see where 93L is right in here, and you'll notice a pocket of darker colors, including this purple region. This is all dry air in the mid to upper levels, and this is suppressing a lot of thunderstorm activity in the vicinity of 93L. One thing you'll also notice here is there are some upper level cirrus clouds off of the Carolinas kind of streaming towards the southwest and hitting 93L right in the face on the northeast side, and this is exactly why the system remains mostly disorganized. If we go back to the visible loop, you saw that low level center is mostly exposed and the convection is pushed off to the southwestern side. That's precisely because of that northeasterly wind shear pushing the thunderstorms that direction. And the mid-level rotation, which is difficult to see on satellite, a little more apparent in radar, uh, I'm not going to show it here, but the mid-level rotation is kind of down near Melbourne. And this system is tilted with height towards the southwest, again, because of that northeasterly wind shear pushing that direction. We can see this in the ECMWF model, for instance, which shows that there's a big upper-level ridge over the deep south, bringing that northeasterly flow over the system. But if we look at the surface level wind flow, you'll see that there's all this southeasterly flow coming into the Carolinas on the western periphery of the subtropical ridge, which is out over here, over the west central Atlantic. And so at the surface, the low is getting pushed towards the northeast. And that's exactly why on the satellite loop, you'll notice that this spinner is trying to move toward Jacksonville, Florida, right? but the mid-level center is getting pushed a little bit more towards the west or west-southwest by that ridge that we saw over the deep south in water vapor imagery and in the model depiction of the upper-level wind flow. So this ridge here is going to try to bring the mid-level circulation out into the gulf, but the surface flow is trying to push the surface center inland. This is a type of vertical shear that is going to persist over the next couple of days and will likely be something the system contends with for some time. It's not particularly conducive for development. It may reduce a little bit over the next two to three days, but if we loop this forward, the upper level flow kind of remains in this configuration where you have a belt of easterlies along the North Gulf Coast region, and this ridge remains over the Appalachian region. And so our system, which will be somewhere in here, is going to be contending with upper level easterlies the entire time. If we look at the surface wind field on this model, you'll see that the surface circulation does go inland near the Florida Georgia border, and it kind of stays there. It's not coming back out over water. The original spinner that we see on satellite this morning remains inland. And really what we're watching is what's going on underneath the mid-level circulation. If we take a look at the, the moisture plot with mid-level wind, we'll see in the black contour is our surface center. That'll go inland like we just saw. But you'll notice in the wind barbs here, the mid-level center is to the south, and we're going to follow that out across Florida and into the Gulf following this green moisture. So as our surface center goes inland, it's sitting in here, hard to see on this map, but you'll notice there's still a little bit of a trough axis here where the wind direction shifts a little bit in the mid-levels associated with this area of green, but it's uh, pretty offset from where we tracked that surface center. So it's still ill-defined, very tilted with height, 
And the question for this disturbance over time will be whether or not there's enough thunderstorm activity to develop a new surface circulation underneath of this mid-level trough. Some wind shear being present means that this is not trivial to do, but over enough time, it is possible that a new disturbance tries to develop coherently over water. Some models do show this potential, but by and large, most models show the system struggling with the surface center disconnected and inland from the mid-level trough, which is out over the Gulf. If we look at NOAA's high-resolution hurricane model called HAFS, we'll see our system this morning off the coast. This black contour is where the surface center is, and again, we're looking at mid-level moisture and wind. And as this moves forward, you'll see the surface center does go inland just south of Jacksonville. The mid-level rotation pocket continues on to itself, and as it goes out over the Gulf, Again, you see the mid-level rotation well out over water, but the surface center is, is far decoupled from this. And so the key is whether something new can develop underneath. On this particular model, you do see that eventually, as the system gets farther from the subtropical ridge in the Atlantic, the vertical shear does decrease somewhat, so you get a little bit more symmetric of a moisture pocket. And as it all coalesces near the central Gulf Coast, you do see an area of low pressure try to develop closer to the mid-level rotation center and embedded in that dark green color indicating there's background moisture. And in this case, this is a tropical depression trying to form in the model right along the central Gulf coastline. And this is a possibility that shows up on some of the ensemble modeling as well. This is the European ensemble showing 93L just offshore Florida. It crosses. And then for a while, you don't see a whole lot, but on Thursday morning, you do see some members popping up here with deeper cyclones emerging out of an area of moisture and convection in the model. And you might count these up and see that there's about five members that show some kind of storm development near the central Gulf Coast here. The ensemble has a total of 50, 51 members. So this is about 10% of the ensemble. It's not a large number kind of goes with the, the narrative here that the probability of a legit storm development is lower than 50% at this time. The National Hurricane Center gives it about 40% odds. It feels about right for now, just given how dry everything is in the vertical shear that the system is contending with, plus the fact that it has to cross Florida, which is going to represent a disruption in its development. So is it possible we see something try to develop once it gets toward the Central Gulf Coast? Sure. Uh, is the probability high right now? No, not at this time. What will happen though is it's going to drag a corridor of moisture and rainfall across portions of the Florida Peninsula and then along the Gulf Coast as well. So if you look at the excessive rainfall outlook from the Weather Prediction Center from the National Weather Service, you are going to see a slight risk of excessive rainfall or flash flooding potential across the Central Florida Peninsula today. And then the next day you see it start to crawl along the North Gulf Coast with marginal probabilities. And then by day three, you'll see probabilities increase over the Central Gulf Coast, especially Louisiana and Mississippi. And by day four, you see that even a moderate risk of excessive rainfall and flash flooding shows up in portions of Central Louisiana. And I can show you uh, the rainfall that comes out of the model directly here. You know, this is the European ensemble member ensemble mean, I'm sorry, showing this corridor of rainfall. And the reason it gets heavier over in Louisiana is twofold. One is that the system is getting farther from the subtropical ridge. So the flow that's pushing it towards the land is a weakening. And so the system just slows down as it's trying to make this turn. It just kind of slows up in here. And we're also seeing some of the dry air begin to get mixed out. So the model is saying there's a chance for more thunderstorm activity once this, the system reaches the central Gulf relative to where it is now, whereas we talked about earlier, there's not a ton of thunderstorm activity. So things may moisten up eventually once it's over the Gulf for a couple of days. So overall, the good news is 93L is a pretty weak and disorganized system. The combination of land interaction, wind shear, and a overall dry environment means that this will likely struggle a bit to develop further over the next couple of days. But if the mid-level guts of it remain over water in the northern Gulf, there is a chance for a tropical depression to try to form prior to moving inland over the North Gulf Coast in two to three days. So we will be keeping an eye on the system. Right now, the primary concern is heavy rains across Florida and then across the rest of the North Gulf Coast over the coming days that could cause some flash flooding concerns. Stay tuned to your local National Weather Service forecast office for the latest hazards for where you are. 
That's it for now. Thanks for watching.